Anyway, <laughs> our next speaker is Adam Bauer from the University of Surrey, and uh, you see the title there. Yeah. <laughs> just a mini, just a mini announcement. Sorry. Um, uh, just before the coffee break, or like when we finish in this session, when we have coffee, we would like to take a group photo, or not a group, but uh, just a <laughs> from the Lincoln Institute. Um, and this, but this is going to happen just right outside the Little Tea ceremony. Okay, so don't run away. Let's meet there for a photo yeah. and then okay. over to you again. Thank you. Yeah, I've had a lot of yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for the invitation to that I can be part of this this interesting uh, uh, satellite program, Newton satellite program, and for the opportunity that I can present my work here. Um, I'm going to talk about structure preserving discretizations of rotating shallow water equation, uh, so stochastic version of the rotating shallow water equations that we derived. This is joint work with Rüdiger Brecht from University of Bremen. Currently, at that time, I co supervised Rüdiger and Long and uh, uh, the co supervisor of this work. And a lot of the, the ideas from this work are from ETM Um He's in the Stuart project. And I'm going to present here uh, how we brought together structure preserving deterministic uh, methods and stochastic equations to derive. Equations that go towards structure preserving stochastic rotating shallow water equations. So I present shortly, I think all of us know what, what we mean when we talk about ensemble forecast, but let me shortly wrap this up and give it as a motivation of why we are interested in stochastic modeling. Then introduce an overview slide of how we combined a, uh, or what kind of stochastic model we use and how we discretize it. So the, the major part of this work is, can we transfer a consistent stochastic model, whatever you mean with consistent, but in this sense, a energy conserving model that conserves certain uh, 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 balances of a geophysical flow. How can we somehow save this conserv conservative properties and translate them to a discrete model? So it's not trivial, obviously. So, so we need some kind of structure preserving discretization. And I split this up because the equation somehow suggests to treat this as two different parts. We can treat the deterministic equations, the deterministic part, and then I talk a little bit about the stochastic part, and then I show some, some, some results. Okay, let me start with the motivation. So when I talk, when we talk about ensemble forecasts, so we have a, an ensemble, we run uh, different realizations of a stochastic model, and because we, the stochastic process should somehow model the unknown processes uh, in uh, unresolved processes and also model error. We will result in some kind of a spread of the of the result of the of the uh, simulation. So when we look here, for instance, a mixing problem of the quasi geostrophic uh, model. So we uh, we do some ensemble run and we see that after thirty days we have a certain spread and then. We have a high resolution control run here just to see whether we do a good job. And we talk about we have a good ensemble spread, a reliable ensemble spread, when we see that our ensemble spread somehow captures also the observation. And the aim of this talk is can we uh, now um, construct a reliable discretization uh, uh, that we start from a consistent stochastic uh, uh, PDE? Um, yeah. So what do I mean with structure preserving stochastic model and what model do we consider? So the, the main assumption from the, the this is also what Daryl Holm does with SALT or from the location uncertainty model is we assume a fast slow decomposition of the velocity. So our advecting velocity has a, a, a large scale flow or a slow moving flow and large scale oscillation. So the large scale velocity is spatially and temporally correlated and we have a high oscillatory uh, unresolved component, which we consider, which we call as noise and we model as a noise component. Then we throw it into a machinery, into local uncertainty derived by, by Etienne Mima. It, it's based on the stochastic Reynolds transport theorem and we come out with a complicated set of stochastic PDEs. So now, so when we do this for this 3D flow stuff and we do this and then, but 
we have this complicated set now. I don't show this all, I just tell you. So we can then do a scale analysis. We jump to the right scales. We, we, we uh, jump to the, to the uh, principal leading orders and we come to the stochastic rotating shallow water equations that look like that. So here, we, we, this is not that we invented something fancy. So this comes out of the derivation process and by, uh, by uh, scaling. Um, and what we result in is we have here now, actually when I can show this, I have here deterministic terms that we know from, we have an advection term, the rotation term, and we have a gravitational term, and then we have the divergence. And we have additional terms that are the stochastic terms. So this is the noise term. And here we have a term that has the, it looks like a diffusion term. When A would be a constant, this would be simply the Laplacian applied to you. And here A measures the strength of the noise. And here we actually, this was a 3D velocity. So by all the reduction stuff and uh, scale, scaling stuff, we came to a 2D version, uh, which looks like that. So the, the, the interesting part is, is that this stochastic model, when you look at it from the continuous side, each realization of this model preserves, oh, sorry, each of this model preserves, uh, uh, each realization preserves total energy. So the noise that we bring in into the system by this model is dissipated away by this dissipation term. And when you look at this one, it looks like the advection term. So when you look at this term, so this term, this noise term has impact on the large scale advection. So this will later on, we will see that we, when we create small scale noise, we will see an effect on the large scale. So this is a stochastic parametrization. Yes. This is a, they switch between E2 and Stratonovich. This is, uh, here we have, this is here, Ito, I think. Uh, the other one, but the other one term is not the correct, it's not the Ito correct. No, 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 no. This comes out from the calculation. It's not the E2 corrector. It's more. Okay. It's not just switching between these two things. Uh, it's, it's more. Exactly. Um, yes. But this is not the actual deterministic, right? It's the variant matrix A. Is that the sigma? No, this is A uh, when you do the, 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 the phrase of A, this gives sigma. So this is. A follows from sigma. A is sigma quadrat. Yes, exactly. Okay. It, it, it is complicated. Um, yeah, but it's it's sigma sigma transpose gives. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for helping out. <laughs> this is then the depth of the stochastic part, which I didn't do all by myself, obviously. Either, so. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the idea that we had here in this paper is now, okay, how can we translate this energy conserving properties to, uh, to the discrete setting. So this is more my part now where I feel more comfort comfortable. <laughs> um, so here we took now the deterministic part and took a variational discretization scheme. I will go to this very briefly because time running fast. Um, and we discretize this one as a normal deterministic scheme. And then we take the stochastic parts here and as an idea, we just thought, okay, what can we do? Uh, we don't know any kind of variational discretization method for the stochastic terms. We just discretize them at standard finite differentials. And as, we've, as, we, as I can show you later, this worked out well. Uh, um, the combination worked well. So um, now I talk a little bit about how we treat these two terms, so the deterministic and the stochastic term separately. So the deterministic part follows a variational discretization principle, but I don't want to go too much into detail here. Just give you the major idea of how variational principle works. So we start with the Lagrangian, it describes the energy system, 
the energy sources of the system. We do variations of this. And Holm showed us that we can then come from this variation of principle to Euler Poincare equations. These are kind of generalized momentum equation here in the sense for fluids. So for instance, when I want to describe the Euler Poincare, the, the incompressible Euler equation, I'd start with a Lagrangian that describes the kinetic energy. Here we are, for the sake of simplicity, we are in the divergence free setting. And then I calculate the functional derivatives, put them here inside, and I come to this equation. So what did we gain? So we have a very general approach. So we start from a Lagrangian, do this, do this, do math, and come in, come to consistent set of equations. And these equations conserve certain uh, uh, conservation laws. And this uh, and the idea of this discretization discretization framework, variational discretization framework is now not starting to discretize immediately the equations of motion, but we discretize the entire framework. So we want to have something that mimics this framework. So we want to start from a discrete Lagrangian and we want to formulate a discrete Euler Poincare theory. So this was the, the idea here. Um, so we start with discretizing the Lagrangian here in the sense we would, we would find for the velocities, some kind of matrix representation. And for the velocity, which is a function, it would be some kind of piecewise constant function that mimics cell values. And then we have to somehow discretize these functional derivatives, we can do. And what, what do we gain from this one? We have now a very general way of starting from a Lagrangian and doing functional derivatives and putting it, it into a, a generalized into a discrete Euler Poincare framework and come to consistent equations of motion that preserve important features. So this we did here. So um, this is a couple of details, but just to let you know, so we just when we start from this, usually you, you start, uh, you have a configuration on a manifold and you see, okay, one fluid configuration is met by a diffeomorphism to the next one. This has a Lie group structure. And when you, when you follow the, the, the full theory, we can actually find discrete version of a Lie group and then of a Lie algebra. And this Lie algebra already gives us the vector fields that we are searching for. And this is not something crazy what comes out, but what comes out is in actually are somehow, when we do this, this exercise, we come to uh, Lie algebra elements that looks like fluxes over next cells. So it's something like, we, we now came to something that is very familiar to us, a flux over a cell. These are this AIJ, so a flux from this to this cell is now really something like an integral over the normal of this, so it's a flux. And cell values in the center are simply sum over this flux and how the density here inside changes. Oh, no, how, how, how the, 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 the flux changes the content of this, 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 this element. And uh, discrete fluid densities are then a uh, uh, come as cell averaged functions. They come also out of this formulation, but it's not so important here to understand all the detail. What's important here is now that we have now the, 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 the means of a discrete version of a vector field and of a function of a density. And we can now formulate the Lagrangian that is usually, you know, when you have a Lagrangian for the rotating shallow watt equation, we have here the kinetic energy term, we have the rotating term here, the potential term. So we can now formulate our discrete version like this one. And then we want to do functional derivatives. Uh, we can define them with respect to pairings that we can define and uh, uh, can, we can well define these pairings such that we can calculate functional derivatives. We put this inside a, a, a discrete version of the Euler-Poincaré equations so of this generalized momentum equation, and we come to consistent equations of motion. So this is what I want to say that this one, it's, uh, um, I want to spend more time on the other part. And we could even extend this one to energy conserving schemes that dissipate away potential entropy without impacting on energy conservation, but I don't want to talk about this one. So, sorry.
This is the scheme. So it looks complicated, but it's actually not. This is simply some kind of gradient of the kinetic energy. When you see this is the kinetic energy associated to each edge. And then you take the sum of this minus the sum of this. So this is simply like the gradient of the kinetic energy. Here we have the gradient of the, of the height field and of the bottom topography. And so the linear terms are very similar or similar to a standard finite volume scheme, but what's different is the nonlinear terms. And this makes also the difference why our model is energy conserving in com comparison to others. So this is now what we take for, for the deterministic term. So we have now, we take this on the sphere and this is what we take. And let's, let me a little bit show what kind of properties this has. So we have convergence of the solution. So we, here we checked a steady, a steady state solution. So when we make the increase the resolution, we see that our, our um, solutions converge. So we have energy conservation, which is shown here. We have potential vorticity conversation, but we see that entropy increases. And then what I said is that on, on, on um, then we went to the sphere. Does it work? No, it's now. And then we brought this model to the sphere. And do you see uh, the problem of entropy increasing is that it makes the solution noisy. But what we did in this paper here, we added some dissipation. And um, so we have now energy conservation, but we dissipate away um, entropy. So what you see here is an energy conserving and a slightly increase of entropy. This is this solution. This is the original 2019 work on the sphere. And then we went to a dissipation that conserves still energy. You see it here, but it dissipates away entropy. And when you go to a standard Bilaplacian, it would also dissipate away energy and entropy. So this is what we've done here. So this variational integrator allows you to play around, have energy conservation and then control of the entropy. So this is the first part of the scheme. And now we come to the stochastic part. Um, so what, what did we have? We have these stochastic terms here that we want to uh, uh, find the uh, uh, representation. So as I said, this gradient operator we discretize by finite difference. And now we somehow need to give these stochastic terms a meaning, a representation. And what we did is, so we assume that the underlying fluctuations can be separated into a part of a large scale part and a small scale noise part with some kind of cutoff uh, 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 frequency. Um, and then we do a, um, a EOF sample of these fluctuations and we model the, 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 the small scale that, we ca that came out of this EOF decomposition of these this fluctuations. This we use to model the noise. Um, this representation uh, is, is what we have here. Actually, we have a spatial mode and we have some eigenvalues of this. And here we have a standard Gaussian variable. So we translate this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, white noise here, this Brownian motion into this kind of, of representation that we can uh, feed in information by constructing EUFs. How do we construct the EUFs now? So we checked two versions. So we did an offline version. So we took high resolution initial conditions and did the EUFs and, and, and calculated the noise and the eigenvalues by a singular value decomposition. And this we used as our, uh, our noise and our, our covariance matrix in the simulations. And we had an online learning version where we, so this is from a high resolution run and yeah, the online version is it only uses a coarse resolution run. So when you don't have a high resolution version, five, okay, thanks. Um, then, then you somehow have to generate this kind of observations to, uh, to, to create these EUFs. And this was some kind, we, 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 we created some pseudo observations by having a sliding window and, and picking randomly. And this allowed us to create low resolution uh, um, pseudo observations that allowed us also to, to, to calculate now in runtime UF. So this one is we do it in initial condition and we leave the noise 
not updated, but the second version is an online version. So we update the noise and the calculation of the noise at a certain, after a certain time window. Yeah, and for comparison reason, in the next slide, I compare this one also with, uh, with uh, the standard way, which is often done where we perturb the initial condition and run an ensemble where we have a deterministic model, but we just perturb the initial condition. This I call PIC, perturb the initial conditions. So we use two versions of the noise. So we perturb the initial conditions and let the, 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 the stochastic models run. So we compare now this offline, online stochastic models in, stochast in structure preservation with this peak models and also with a deterministic model. This is what we're going to do here. So um, first of all, um, I, I told you that the, the Continuous equation preserves each realization preserves total energy. So, what we what we achieved is that we have the, that the spatial discretization also preserves energy now. So, a total energy. We could see this by making the time step smaller, and we use an Euler Marayama scheme, time scheme, and so this has first order convergence. So we see that our spatial discretization preserves energy, time. Uh, so it's not time uh, the time integrator not yet. So what's, what's important here is when we compare, for instance, this large scale flow, it's a Galevsky test case, is this is a large scale flow, this is triggered by small scale disturbance. And when you don't resolve this small scale disturbance, it's, it won't be triggered. This is what you see here. So this is a high resolution run, it's a test run. And here, this is a low resolution run where uh, the small scale features are not resolved. So this, the, 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 this instability is not properly triggered. But when you compare it now with our stochastic model, which has this feedback from small to large scale, you see that it's the same cause resolution in comparison to high resolution. You see that this, in fact, can trigger this large scale flow. So it's important to have this stochastic feedback mechanisms inside when you want to resolve on a cause resolution this kind of features. And we can also explain what's happening here when you look at the spectra, when you look at the kinetic energy spectra, here we have the frequency. These are high frequency, are very small scale features. When you look at the, at the reference, which well resolves this, this, this feature, you see that here at the small scales, we have these features. There's a, a high, uh, there's activity here, whereas in the deterministic run, we don't have them. But when you look at the stochastic runs, they are much closer to the reference, and this is why this, uh, this, this large scale flow is triggered. And then the same accounts here for the normalized entropy. So you also see that the reference has here high, uh, 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 small scale features. The stochastic model has these small scale features, whereas the deterministic and also the peak models don't have them. Okay, and then. Uh, the last slide here, back to this model here, what we've done here, uh, we check then whether our spread that this model uh, produces is reliable. We put some meshes on it. Yes, telegram diagram are flat and certain meshes that confirm us that we have a good spread for this, this barotropic model when we do a forecast here of the 30 days. What's interesting is when you look at this mixing process, when you do the statistics, this is some kind of where the this vortices are in, in mean. And when you look at the truth, this is a high resolution model. Our stochastic model is closer to the truth than a comparable low resolution LES model. And this was for a barotropic model. And in the in the work of 2021, we also checked the spread of our stochastic rotating shallow water model. And also here you see that a peak model, a perturbed initial condition model doesn't really capture the variability of the observation. Yeah, with this, I come to the conclusion. What did I do? So we introduced a spatially energy conserving stochastic scheme. So we take a consistent scheme and we discretize the deterministic part by a variational integrator and the other part uh, um, uh, straightforward by a final difference, final volume. What we see is that the stochastic terms are important to trigger on a low resolution run this large scale flow pattern. And the reason here was that the low resolution stochastic models, these LU models, actually had sufficient small scale features. 
the ensemble spread was accurate, more accurate than in an comparable LS model, and the statistic was more close to the truth or to the uh, to the reference than again for LS model. And as an outlook, we want to to build in this Casimir dissipation that I introduced in the first part, also for the stochastic model, we didn't do this yet. And as long-term goal, uh, we would like to use this st structure-preserving schemes to work towards also to kind of structure-preserving data assimilation algorithms, whatever this would mean. Yeah, here's some references and thank you very much and sorry for taking <laughs> You mean energy conservation? Yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think the, the, this is maybe when you, when, because I'm talking, I'm a structure preserving guy, I'm talking a lot about this, but when, but when you look at this one, I think the, the, when you have turbulence, when you talk about turbulence, when you have now, I was at the, the most, uh, a very important part of this derivation is that we have this stochastic interaction term. This is more important than I would say that the uh, energy conservation part. So that, that this kind of structures are triggered because you have this interaction. Energy conserving is not important for this kind of thing, right? So I would say the, the, the work that is presented here, the most important part is that you have um, this interaction term in the equations. So I go back. That, so many slides, sorry. This interaction term, that actually is a feedback mechanism from small scale to the advected velocity. So this is actually what's the most important part. If you don't care about energy conservation, <laughs> I take this, but this, our work gives a contribution to this one. Sorry? Yeah, it comes out of a stochastic, it's not, it's, but it's scaled in the right way such in a backscatter, you put it in and maybe your energy is not right, right? This comes out of one scaling method mechanism and it comes out of the derivation and it keeps the energy conserved. So this is not that I do the backscattering. So it's, it leads to the same problem, but the derivation here is in a consistent framework. So this is probably the backscattering does exactly the same, but our framework gives us a mean to explain it why. No, 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 no. I, I see it. it it's um, it. It works like this, but I. I um, but it, the point is that we didn't invent it. It comes out of the. It is the beauty of it. It comes out of the derivation that this term is a natural. Uh, no, no. This is true, but but you start from an energy conserving scheme and then you dissipate this the way that you want to dissipate it, not numerically. Yes. Exactly. So I, I think it's more fair to say that if you are strictly, you really should have something to remove it relative to the, to the physics of the universe you want, rather than in a less clear fashion, you have non conservative numeric feedback. I think that's the argument. You can debate very much yes, exactly. the quantification, but that's the reason. So the only thing you can say is that maybe you should have added some. I think at some point, uh, uh, some certain simulations work without dissipation at all. And some simulations when we had inhomogeneous noise, we add, we actually needed a tiny bit of dissipation. But you could probably see in the simulation, 
check uh, where the full sentence is starting. Terminalize that and then get the part in red. Yes, that's yes, we do this. Yeah. No, you can actually see when, yeah, yeah, when you are, you can actually see probably when, 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 when it does change. Yeah, so. this was perfect. Yeah, yes. Anyway, um, any other final questions before we move on to the next speaker? Yeah, I mean, uh, but uh, this was a stochastic term is somehow breaking it up a bit more. So we go with the first and specify the first. Yes, so um, the, the time integrator. So we don't have a stochastic time integrator yet. This is true. So this is why you see here, for instance, not energy conserving on any kind of time. So if the time step is too big, we have a bigger error because it's not an it's not fully energy conserving. It's not an energy conserving time integrator, right? It's Euler Marayama, and it just converges in first order when you make time time step smaller. So this is work in progress, but it's difficult. But it's not the first priority, I would say. I think the the, the priority here was somehow, and also what my, what the, what my colleagues at Stuart do, and what they're working on is actually bringing this to more, not a 2D, but now we have a multi-layer ocean model where you see also this kind of feedback mechanism that I just talked about actually trigger, trigger flow features that we don't see in a comparable deterministic flow. So I think this is the, the take home message from this is that the stochastic uh, uh, version LU at some point brings you feedback mechanisms from small to large scale that a deterministic model wouldn't have in this sense. So, yeah. Thank you. Again. Thank you. So that's